Hello, my name is Ben. And my name is Josh. Welcome back to FPL Graduates. So it's game week eight review, the last week before the international break in November. Um, we're going to talk through our teams, see what transfers we're making and what players are playing well, etc. So how did you do this week? So I had an above average week. I got 61 points, not too bad. I mean, it's not the best. My captain choice was what kind of let me down a little bit in that regard. But we'll start off with who I had in goal. In goalkeeper, didn't matter who I picked this week. Both of my goalkeeper picks got six points. So pretty happy with that, pretty standard. I went with McCarthy anyway and uh, had a double up in defence with uh, Southampton side. McCarthy and Carl Walker-Peters, yeah. who got me a nine-pointer. Really good week from him. Uh, he played really well as well. I was watching the game and he, he had a phenomenal game. So I'm really happy with those Southampton picks at the moment. I think they're good for long term as well. Mm -hmm. I've got James Justin, who got me a six-pointer. I expected nothing less from him. I didn't think Wolves were going to score many goals at the weekend. They don't usually score. And yeah, six pointer. And then I have Trent Alexander Arnold on a two pointer this week. I mean, it's a tough one because he obviously out injured and we have to evaluate after the international break whether I bring him out for someone like Chilwell or Cresswell yeah. or whether he, he could potentially be back. Don't know whether he will be, but we'll have to assess that one. Now, my other defender, Kilman, I initially had him on the bench for Mares. And Morris didn't play for whatever reason. I still don't know why he didn't play, but he was just not in the squad. So Kilman came in, got one point. Bit annoying, but you know what? It's one of the things that happens in FPL. Sometimes your assets just randomly don't play. So you know what? We'll take that. Midfield, not too bad in the midfield. Zaha, five points. He got an assist. He could have got more, and I think he should have got more. If Crystal Palace are scoring three goals in one half. Zaha needs to be involved in them, really. Yeah. But I'm quite happy in the end he got an assist. Four nows, three-pointer. Didn't do much at all in that game for me against Fulham. I thought he'd do a lot better. He was kind of playing a bit too deep and a bit too wide to have any real impact on the game. And he's not quite got the pace to like have a real impact down there. So that was a differential punt anyway, so I can't yeah. get too disheartened about that. My captain was Son. It was either between Son and Kane. And because you picked Kane, I was like, you know what, I'll just go Son instead. Overall, I missed out on probably like six points in total from my captain pick. So it's not the end of the world. It is another return that maybe would have helped. But in the grand scheme of things, we won't look too deeply into my captain pick. Mm -hmm. And then we had Salah who got a nine-pointer. Now I'm pretty happy with that. Definitely. It's really loud. <laughs> Um, yeah, he got the penalty, obviously, all three, well, did he get all three? He got two bonus points. Two bonus points. Two yeah. bonus points. And, and yeah, Salah being Salah, I think he's only not returned twice this season, so Take it. pretty good for, for returning the season. Up front, Harry Kane and Calvert-Lewin, same as usual, they both return. Maybe lucky that Kane returned in that, what, 88th minute, but you know what, we'll take that and the three bonus points and move of it. And Calvert-Lewin... Didn't actually have a great game to be honest, but he managed to get get a cheeky little assist. I think it was a lucky assist as well. It was it a lucky assist. Was Lindelof, didn't it? But I'm still happy with with him and my team because the next three fixtures are to looking quite tasty, and then they go on a bit of a tougher run. But you know what? I'm happy with Calvert Lewin. He's still getting points. He's getting everyone points. So yeah. we'll move on the bench. Didn't really have many points again, other than Ryan Brewster. Didn't do much, but. They're on the bench for a reason. I do feel like I need a bench that's, that's playing and getting points, but as a, a, as we see, the, the points on my first team get more than the bench, so I can't really complain about that too much. Yeah, so moving on to my team, I had a pretty decent week since I haven't wildcarded. Got 81 points this week, and it's mainly through... Uh, Bruno Fernandes and obviously a good captain pick. So starting in goal, I have the same double up. I have McCarthy and Ryan, so both six pointers. I brought in Kurt Zuma and um, Harry Kane this week for Danny Ings and Trent Alexander Arnold. So I took a hit, minus four. Ings obviously wasn't going to play. So as long as Zuma and Kane could have beaten whatever Trent got, we'd be fine. So Zuma got two, which is at the end of the day was okay. He was like the only Chelsea defender not to bloody return, which is quite annoying. But uh, we move, Eric Dyer, six-pointer, we'll take it. That's two weeks in a row now, I do believe, that he's returned. I know, he returned the week before, game week six. Uh, Jamal Lewis, one-pointer, he's down to 4.3 million right now. Newcastle don't look as good defensively as they did last season, so 
he is coming out um, very soon. Charlie Taylor, an eight pointer, that is what your Friday evening, you love to see it. Two bonus points with that, and then nil nil against Brighton. Uh, yeah, Mo Salah, nine pointer, take that against Man City all day. Bruno Fernandes, 17 pointer, that was the highlight of the week. He played unreal, and I looked uh, in, in his games played, he's, when Man United have scored, he's only not returned in one of those games, and that was the first game of the season against Crystal Palace. Every other game, he's got a return in, which is crazy numbers, and I think for 10.5 million, he's an absolute steal. Jack Grealish, 6-pointer, disappointing with this one, like he should literally have had a goal and two assists in that game. A shot cleared off the line, he had the assist ruled out for offside that was like... I don't know, it wasn't even offside, was it? It was like a player that's not intervening really in play. Yeah, it was a bit of a interesting situation. I, I didn't really see why they disallowed yeah, it. Yeah, it was but... a bit stupid. But anyway, now had Son, obviously he didn't do anything. Uh, and then Calvert Lewin and then Captain Harry Kane. Uh, I was buzzing when that happened when he got the goal. And he also got three bonus points, which is just what you'd love to see because nothing really happened in that West Brom Spurs game which was surprising. Then on the bench I had a Ryan Six and Esri Concer Six the first time he returned for me so far and he's been on my bench which isn't it? Chen great and then Bruce Durham Burke obviously Sheffield United that's it it's not really doing well at the minute so overall a really good week I think I went up over 700,000 places in rank which is pretty good considering my start so but wild card has been hit in my camp. Yeah well I'd went down in the uh, overall rank this week. I think it went down about 50,000, so I'm still hovering at like 2 million point. But as we've seen this season, it's, it's not really been a consistent one for, for the performance that we expect to, to perform. So a lot of people I know have been struggling. I mean, I was looking at Twitter, the player group number one last year, I think two or three weeks ago, it was at 1.5 million. So yeah. it's, it's a season where I think that the lucky picks are going to be what what separates um, yeah. separates people this year. You got to go. I've seen a lot of people taking hits, and I think it's probably a season where taking hits is quite viable because a lot of players are getting injured or are not playing through yeah. COVID or stuff like that. So, for example, like Danny Ings getting injured and me taking a minus four, unless Trent does something incredible, it's going to easily pay off. Mm. So, a lot of hits could be taken, but yeah. It's a good week, international break now. We have a little breather from all the FPL action and we're back on it hot and hard in December. We have double game week coming up near Christmas as well. So yeah. it's going to be double decent, a lot of chips to be played. Yeah, so we got the international break to kind of digest and, and look, look at my transfers especially. We'll start with me. Um, well, it's only a matter of time before Trent Alexander-Arnold goes down in price and I think I'm going to have to accept that he is going to go down in price. Take, take, the, take the hit on that one because I do not want to make my transfer early and uh, then he comes back and plays and has a really great run of fixtures. So what I'm going to do is wait and see. I think if I'm going to make transfers... It will be Trent Alexander-Arnold out if he's injured and it will be Chilwell or Aaron Cresswell in because I was looking at I was looking at Cresswell's stats against Fulham and they're crazy. Like he produced the most chances out of any West Ham player. His crossing is insane. He hit the crossbar in that game. Like he, he looks like a really good attacking option. And Chilwell, he's, he, had, he had one of the most touches in the opposition box at the weekend. Like... But uh, yeah. these fullbacks are doing a madness this season. And uh, another one who I may transfer out, but I'm not too sure yet, is Mitchell because he's injured. I don't know when he's back. It's an unknown return date. Um, other than that, in the in the defensive goalkeeper, pretty happy, pretty set. I know uh, Kilman did like didn't look too great, but he for his price, Wolves yeah. don't see too many goals any plays, so I can't be too concerned about that. 
in my midfield, bit of a sticky one because I want to get rid of Son, I want to get rid of Mares, and I want to get rid of Four Nows, but which one do I get rid of first? I think Son could turn up and play really well against Man City next, uh, next game week because uh, he kind of likes playing against those teams that press really hard. He doesn't really play well against the low block no. side. So I think he could play well. So it's why I might hold off on this Son transfer, which everyone seems to be seems to be thinking about at the moment. Mm-hmm. Mares, I want to take out because he's not like yeah. he's not well. He he does play, but this is his first week he hasn't really played. But yeah. City are only scoring one goal a game at the moment, and that is a bit concerning because we're so used to City having these big hauls and. Like at least one of these city assets a week getting 17, 18 points. So that is concerning. Happy with Zaha because of his fixtures. For nows is one that I could easily easily go to Diogo Jota, who is an option. He's got uh, he is an option. 6. He's, he's 6.5. I'd have money in the bank to be able to make this transfer. So I could make it, but it's just a case of whether Trent is back or not, to be honest. I can see myself taking another minus four as well if the injuries are what the are continuing oh, over yeah. the international break because Fornells does have a good set of fixtures in his next two though so you might be able to hold off on he him he does he does which yeah because he has coming up Sheffield United and Aston Villa well Aston Villa look good and then yeah. they got Man United so yeah, you so know what happened last season with Man United exactly so they're not the worst fixtures and even Aston Villa I think Aston Villa play better against the bigger teams than they mm. do the smaller teams so in terms of my strikers I don't see myself changing Calvert-Lewin and Kane and or even Bruce, I think Bruce can just stay on the bench to be honest. Like He'll get some goals eventually. Like, eventually he will, but Sheffield United just aren't firing. Maybe this international break's come at the right time for him again, just to regroup and, and maybe come back. They've had a lot of injuries this season. Calvert-Lewin has three really nice fixtures and then potentially could sell him after those three really nice fixtures. Yeah. He's got a bit of a run of bad fixtures. Kane is always going to score against big teams. There's no doubt about it. I think he will return against the biggest sides because he is that quality of striker. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's pretty much the, the transfers in my team. What are you saying about yours, Josh? Yeah, so I've gone wild card in for this international break. It was always the plan to save it for November. And even though my team played the best I've ever played in the last game week, I don't really see it being sustainable because obviously pretty much half my points came from Bruno Fernandes and Harry Kane last week. So nice, but we're going to move on. So I've got to kept the double up in goal with Ryan and McCarthy. I was going to go to Ed- Edouard Mendy from Chelsea, but I've seen Chilwell play and he's just playing incredible right now. Like he's literally like on, he's in the box from corners, he's, like, he's always in there as like a third. And Chelsea have some okay fixtures coming out. They have Newcastle, Spurs, Leeds, Everton. Like there's teams there that have been hot and cold, so not too bad. Um, I've just kind of spread my money around quite a lot in the wild cards. I think it's more important to do so. So for the, currently my defence is Chilwell Balbuena from West Ham, Matt Target from Villa, Jao Cancelo from City and Kilman from Wolves. So there's just five teams that have, they're obviously very cheap defenders and they have decent fixtures. Cancelo was my main one that I wanted to get in because City got on a great run. He creates loads of chances from fullback, even against Liverpool, he probably should have had an assist. So he's got a good option. Kept Salah, kept Bruno for now. He's quite, he's worth the money, but he is still quite expensive. Even though I said he's like value for money, because he's ten and a half, and I feel like I could use Rashford, and he's like a million cheaper. Do you know what I mean? Like, but then he does. If something happens, it's usually Bruno. So it's a tough one to think. But they have West Brom at home next, so. I can't really say no to that fixture despite West Brom defending quite well. I think United will struggle in that game, but I see Bruno returning. Got Ziyech and Grealish as my other midfielders along with Salah. Um, Ziyech playing unreal in his last two games. He's a man in form right now. He's an easy switch to a City midfielder when their fixtures become good as well. And then Jack Grealish, he's just playing phenomenal right now. He's got, I think, four goals, five assists so far in his first seven games. Uh, and Villa have a decent run of fixtures. They're, like they've got Brighton, West Ham, Newcastle, Wolves, Burnley, West Brom, Palace in their next what's that seven. So yeah, good run of fixtures. Then we've got up front Calvert Lewin because he's got a good run of fixtures. I've took out Harry Kane for Jamie Vardy because Leicester have better fixtures than Spurs and Vardy 
is just like Kane where they both will just score pretty much all the time. And then my last striker is Shea Adams in at 5.8 million because the guy's just scoring goals consistently and Danny Ings is out. So if Southampton are going to score, it's more than likely going to be through him. Yeah, it looks like a very decent team, that. Very decent. I mean, taking out the Spurs assets, yeah, that's a brave choice. It's brave, but their run of fixtures is very, very bad. And I don't... Like it's, if, even if they do win, I don't see them being as explosive as they as they have been. Like I don't see them beating a team six one like they did with United. So yeah, I think it'll be a wise choice come the end of it. I think the players that I've brought in uh, instead of those Spurs assets are going to be more than better. Like Vardy, he's playing unreal, and again, if Leicester score, he's the one who does the damage. So good options. Right, so that has been our Game Week 8 roundup and a little preview into Game Week 9. Make sure to like this video, comment, all that good stuff, share it about, follow the TikTok, follow the Twitter. Anything else we've missed out? No, that's it for now, but there might be some more socials coming soon. We've got a lot of thinking to do in this international break, haven't we? No, we do indeed. Lots of content to be at. And uh, as always, I've been Ben. I've been Josh. We'll see you later.